What I'm calling number relationships problems are one of the most basic types of algebra word problems. And these questions are given information about a number, for example, three more than twice a number. is equal to the number. And you're asked to find out what the number is. For example, take a look at this problem. One more than a number doubled is equal to four less than the number. And we want to find the number. The way I like to approach these problems is by doing a literal translation of the English statement into an algebra equation. So to do that, I'll start with the expression and break it up into parts, each of which I can then translate into a number or symbol. For this statement, the parts would be 1 more than a number doubled is equal to four less than and finally the number. Now I'll go through and start replacing the words with numbers and symbols. I'll start with one which is just the number one and more than which means add or plus. This brings me to a number. Anytime you see a phrase like this that represents what you're trying to find that's where you'll put the variable. For this equation I'll use the letter X. Next we have doubled which means two times and then we have is equal to which becomes an equal sign. That brings us to the less than part of the statement. This is where things get a little unusual. In English we say subtraction words like less than in the opposite order to the way we do the calculation. For example three less than 10 means 10 minus 3, not 3 minus 10. So for this expression, I'll replace the less than with minus, but the 4 and the number parts go in the opposite order. Now that we've translated the entire English statement into math symbols, this leaves us with an equation that we can solve to get the final answer. I'll start by subtracting x from both sides, which gives me 1 plus x equals minus 4. And then I'll subtract 1 from both sides, which leaves me with x equals minus 5. So the number that has the property described in the original statement is negative 5. So let's take a look at another example. This is actually the example that I mentioned on the first slide. Why don't you pause the presentation here and see if you can solve this on your own. Then you can start it back up and see how I do it. I'm going to approach this problem the same way I did the previous one. I'll start by blocking the expression out into smaller parts that I can translate directly into math. I'll start with the 3, then more than twice a number is equal to, and finally, the number. Now to translate those parts, the 3 just becomes the number 3, more than becomes plus, twice becomes 2 times. A number is what we're looking for, so I'll replace that with the variable x. Is equal to becomes equals. And again, the number is just the variable. And now we have an equation that we can solve. I'll start by subtracting 2x from both sides, which will leave me with 3 equals minus x. Now to get rid of the minus, I'll multiply both sides of the equation 
by negative 1, that will leave me with the final answer, x equals negative 3. At this point, you might be asking yourself, why do we need to learn this? I'm never going to have to do this kind of thing in a real-world situation. This is the kind of question that is, is not going to come up in a business or scientific situation. The reason why you're asked to do problems like this is because they're a very basic example of how to go from an English scenario to a technical scenario, and that is an important skill to have. While these questions may not be practical in their own right, they give you an opportunity to practice a basic skill that you'll need to answer the more complex questions that you will see in business, science, and so forth.